she might be the one, but I'm not sure. Well, if I look into your eyes, I will know. Hi, my name is Patrick Wu. I'm the author of the book, The Art of Wooing. And on this channel, I help you woo the lover of your dreams to be in a relationship with you so that you can escape the dating game altogether. And in this episode, I'm gonna talk about a scenario a lot of guys come to me for, and it goes something like this. Hey Patrick, there's this woman that I'm dating and I can't really tell if she's the one. There are some good things, but then there are also some bad things and I don't know really if she is or not. So when people come to me and ask that question, a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times, this person is probably not the one for them. But they come to me because they want to get some confirmation for me to tell them, yeah, it is the one. You can stop worrying about this altogether. But really what happens is that they deep down kind of know that this person is not the one for them, but they want to justify that this person is good for them. So I'll give you like a scenario of what this looks like. So I once had a friend who came to me and said, you know, Patrick, I think this person is good for me, but I'm not really sure. When I'm around her, I can't really be myself, but I think that's a good thing because if I were to really be myself, I'd be reckless, I would be a wild animal. This is an example of someone justifying that this person is good for me, but deep down, I kind of also know that it's not the person for me. So let's kind of go through both scenarios on why this person is not for you, and also what are the signs that this person is a good match for you. So one of the reasons why someone might lie to themselves that this person is for them even when it's not, is because they don't want to start all over in the whole dating game. Because let's be honest, for a lot of people, they want to be in the comforts of being in a relationship with someone and not have to worry about dating. Because when you date, what happens? You have to go through a lot of rejection, you have to go through a lot of uncertainty, you have to go through heartbreak, you have to go through a lot of time management, um, you have to go through a bunch of dates and money. So basically there's a lot of things that come with dating and some people, they don't really enjoy the aspect of the beginning stages of dating. And sometimes when you get too antsy or you, you want this result too quickly, you also fall into the trap of dating someone that is not a good match for you. So in my last video, I called it, are you dating just to feel less lonely, which you can go check it out in the links below. I talk a little bit about how when you're feeling really, really lonely, you sometimes make bad decisions because you just want someone to love you so bad that you'll take anyone that comes your way, sometimes like the first person that you see. Afterwards, you try to justify the fact that I know there are a lot of bad things about this person, but there's a lot of good things too. But the thing is, with the bad things, you shove all those bad things down and you don't look at them on purpose. Like you kind of put a, a blind eye to these bad things while you only look at the good things. Later on in your relationship, these bad things start to resurface and, and they do affect your relationship. Another reason why you might not want to admit that this person might not be a good match for you, you're not sure if the next person that you date will be as good as the person that you have right now. So you're afraid that if you date someone new, then those that new person might not have the qualities that you like about this person, even though they have some really bad qualities that you don't really like. But maybe this person will have worse qualities. Maybe I'll actually downgrade if I start dating someone. And what if I, I, I start going out there and I actually find no one? What if I peek out? Maybe this is the best situation I've already got and I can't do any better. So I don't want to lose what I've already got. I already got not a great situation, but what if it's even worse? What if it takes a lot of time of me dating and, and I actually don't get any physical intimacy at all? That situation would be even worse as I have nothing. And the thing is, whenever I ask someone, so do you think this person is the one? And they give me any kind of hesitation, it's usually not the one for them, at least right now. Maybe some things can change, but it definitely is not the one and they might be justifying why this person is good for them. 
when you know that this person is the one, there's this obvious feeling to it where you're like, of course, obviously, of course, it's not even a question. This person is totally the one for me. And this obvious feeling is the indicator whether this person really is a super great match for you. Now, I understand that not everything is going to be a match, right? But there are some categories that you wanna look at in terms of knowing if this person is a good match. So for instance, you wanna look at number one, are you guys emotionally compatible? Number two, are you guys physically compatible? Number three, are you guys intellectually compatible? Number four, are your hobbies and interests compatible? And number five, are your values compatible? And if you look deep inside of yourself and you ask yourself, is this really not the one and you've come to the conclusion that she isn't, then you might want to revise this relationship with this person and look elsewhere because you deserve to find your sweet love. So thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully this has been helpful and again, if you haven't watched my last video yet called, Are You Dating Just To Feel Less Lonely? Then you wanna watch that video by clicking the video right over here. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you guys real, real soon.